thank you for joining us. Um, this text to post the webinar with our partners, TAP Network. Today, we're going to talk about introduction to artificial intelligence for nonprofits. And I've already seen where a lot of you saying you're dabbling in it, you haven't used it, or you use it every day. And um, I think you're going to learn a lot more here. I just want to show you how you can engage today on the next slide. We are recording. Somebody has already asked. We are recording this, and you'll get the recording along with the handouts, um, the slides probably by tomorrow i can't promise you but definitely in the next 48 hours we would love if you would type your question in the q a there's hundreds when i say hundreds over 800 people have registered for this webinar so i'm sure there's going to be lots of questions and we'll be able to manage your questions if you put them in the q a um, section so if you need the closed caption somebody's already turned it on you can leave it there cal somebody already turned the closed caption on just type on the cc button at the bottom of your screen i want to leave you with one other thought i don't know if you've heard about quad but on the TechSoup website techsoup.org just type in the word quad and you'll be able to learn more about quad but this is a peer-to-peer -peer community we have here it's very new you have memberships for 10 users that want to use the courses. Um, you get access to so many other TechSoup catalog offers and get to know other nonprofits in your area. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Kyle at TAP Network and you guys have a great webinar. Awesome, thanks Aretha. Um, just some quick intros and we'll try to breeze through some of this because we do have a lot to cover with you all today. Uh, my name is Kyle Barkins. I'm a co-founder of a company called TAP Network. I'm joined today by Tarek Minar on our team here. He's one of our um, main web developers, but he's kind of our resident AI expert here. Uh, everything from using AI to building actual applications with AI in them. Um, just a quick agenda for what we're gonna cover today. So we'll talk about who we are, quick overview of TAP, um, what AI is and some of its benefits, get some specifics on chat GPT and some uses. Uh, we'll cover some additional AI tools. Uh, I think Tarek's gonna do like a quick live demo for us if we've got some time, and then we definitely wanna save some time at the end for Q and A, because we know you, this is a, a very popular topic with a bunch of questions around it. So we can hope we can answer those for you. Um, just a, some background on who TAP Network is. So we're a full service digital marketing and technology agency who partners with TechSoup. Um, we've been partners with TechSoup, I think at this point for about 10 years or so. Um, we work a lot with them on their marketing, on their marketing automation, and a lot of the creative, and we also partner, we partner exclusively with them for providing marketing services and web development services for nonprofit organizations. Um, we do this because very early on when we started back in 2012, we saw a very a large unmet need in the nonprofit space for them, for you all to be you know, using leveraging tools that like the bigger organizations, the bigger companies um, were, and just, you know, just kind of weren't there yet. So um, we, we hope to help fast track that and partner with with organizations like you all uh how we can help just some some quick background on, on the services we offer everything from strategy to you know paid paid media and public relations and everything in between so seo advertising crm implementation web design web development everything that can kind of run runs the gamut there again as we said we're you know a full service uh, agency we will share the slide deck with you so you guys can can learn more, read more about us, or check out some of the services we offer through TechSoup. And with that, I'll turn it over to Tara to kind of go over what is AI. Okay, so this is very, 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 very scary. Or I think uh, people are really worried about this thing. So hello, beautiful people, this is Tarek, and I'm gonna talk about AI. So AI is a buzzword and people are really scared of it, seeing some robots taking over the world. No, not this one. We're gonna talk about something that is helpful for us not the movies one. So let's talk about what is AI. So I have been told uh, that um, this webinar will be uh, for absolute beginners. So I have to be on the high level so, so that everyone can learn everything from scratch. So don't worry. Uh, those who never used AI before, never used ChatGPT or any other tools before, I'm gonna explain everything as much e as easy possible. And if you have still any question, you can reach out to me anytime and you can also ask in Q&A as well. So. Let's get started. What is AI? So this is a fundamental question. Before I uh, jump into the chat, GPT, I need to talk about this. So AI is basically a computer software that can make or take decision uh, like human that can replicate what human can do. And also uh, that can replicate a couple of uh, characteristics that we as a human have, like uh, making decisions that can learn as well. Based on that, uh, there's a couple of tools out there. Uh, let's talk about the history. In 1950, 
this is why I started. And but in two thousand, we are st start seeing the AI uh, that exposed the internet feeds. Then in two two thousand ten, um, this is where we are start seeing how AI gonna how AI is implemented are gonna implemented in our day to day life basis like uh, smart homes, smart life, and so on. If you think about today, I mean twenty twenty four. Why we are now with AI, we can see a tons of things happening. I, I'm pretty sure you know about ChatGPT. So I can say AI progressed a lot, a lot. And we're going to talk about this today. And we are in the era of AI. So let's go to the next slide. AI by approach. So before I jump into ChatGPT, let's, let me give you some technical terms. So this is something you don't have to worry about or learn about. This is something I think I should talk about. So if I... Uh, Classify the AI in terms of different technologies. We have five. There's more as well. So natural language processing, we call NLP. And we know ChatGPT Gemini. These are actually based on this natural language processing. So what it happens is like GPT or Gemini is like we have computer and uh, we need to, to like NLP gives us the option to talk uh, with the computer as a human, like how we process human language, like a computer can understand our human language and that can reply as well. There's some other like machine learning. So these are different technology so like Netflix, YouTube, they use this machine learning to feed us uh, related stuff, recommendations, stuff like that. We have deep learning. We are going to talk about this. We have computer vision. We have robotics. So robotics is also part of AI, but this is different sector. So let's go to the next slide and I'll show you a couple of models. On this slide, uh, I want to show you a couple of uh, large language model and some other models that we are using. Um, so, you know, uh, ChatGPT, Gemini and Llama and so on, other uh, text to text uh, AI tools. These are actually based on uh, two technology, deep learning and NLP. And we have a big large language model where we have big data set. And from here, we using NLP, we extract the data and talk with these tools. So ChatGPT, Gemini and other so LLM tool like that has text to text uh, capability. We use uh, it actually uses NLP and deep learning, and we call this large language model. Then we have some tools that can generate really beautiful images like Mid Journey and Dali 3. These are actually diffusion models, and that use generative and deep learning. Then we have a speech technology, something I call speech technology. It has two types of it, like speech to text, text to speech. So Whisper is one of the model uh, that use the speech to text and we are going to talk about this also as well and we have video creation and the video creation we have a couple of tools like Sora, Synthesia and Runway ML. Let's jump in to the next slide so Kylie is going to talk, talk about this. Great thanks Tarek appreciate the overview. Um, so just a background like what is AI and some of the benefits that we see for for nonprofit organizations everything from streamlining operations to making like really data driven decisions on, and enhancing, enhancing uh, like your donor database or your volunteer database or your donor engagement. AI is really a place to, a way to like take advantage of that potential, that untapped potential and get more um, from a smaller system. So we're really seeing AI be leveraged for, I think Aretha had mentioned earlier, earlier on or someone else had mentioned to, to do things like write emails or write blog posts. And sure, it's great for that, but it's also great for, um, you know, helping you manage capacity as you're part of a small organization. It's harder for you to do things like look at all the donors in your database and see where there, um, you know, where there's commonalities there or go out and find, you know, like audiences and things of that nature. Um, so we'll go through some more of that today and really talk about how it, how it uh, could impact or affect your organization. So one of the ways we think about, or some of the ways we think about how you all can specifically unlock, um, you know, the potential using chat GPT, which we'll cover kind of more in detail today, as well as, well as some of the other ones, would be things like I just started to talk about. So grant writing, um, fundraising, marketing, and then what the kind of, what sort of the future looks like uh, for AI. We'll share some, some examples of each. So first, um, I want to... Put out a poll to you you guys can just answer this in the chat um how many of you have used chat gpt in the past month and i'll let you guys just kind of answer that as i go through this but you can see 
um, how, how quickly and how, yes, everybody, yes. Uh, so you can see how quickly um, chat GPT was adopted. I think, you know, last year at this time, it was, it was somewhat relatively new. It had just launched, um, but they reached uh, over a hundred million users in just under five days. And you can see how this stacks up um, to other things. So how it took, you know, it took Facebook 10 months to get there. It took Instagram two and a half months. Uh, and it's take, it took chat GPT five days. I think that the, you know, we think that the fast, the quick adoption of this really showcases, you know, how, how much of an unmet need there was in this space and how, you know, how interested the space the you know, people were. And then you'll also see how quickly things get adopted um, going, you know, in the future. So chat GPT launched and it was easy for, for something like Bard to launch from Google or, or a Google system to launch as well, or something like Dolly or Mid Journey, the things that that Tarek, um, that Tarek had mentioned earlier. It's also interesting to see some of the, these other uh, other stats here. Uh, you know where people are using it, and it's where it's used among you know adults. A, a decent uh, distribution, you know, by gender. So it's not more, not really more heavily men versus women that were um, that were surveyed in this. And it's actually, you know, I think somewhat obvious. In related to other technology, but it's it's sort of a younger audience that that adopted it or that that, that is using it. But we're seeing that continue to to kind of get distributed more evenly as um, you know some of the old, some old, some higher ages are, are using this or people with um, you know with with or without advanced degrees and things of that nature. Some things that are unique, uh, specific to Chat GPT, uh, and we're, but we're seeing this in, in other AI tools. Um, it talks like a human, right? So when you're interacting with um, with these AI tools, I'm sure you, I'm sure some of you have seen the um, where there's been errors here, and I know this has been like even on different news channels, but uh, you know across this the ecosystem where there's chatbots out there being used by different companies that are just based on, you know, chat GPT and someone is actually just, inter you know, interacting or interfacing with them just as if it is like a salesperson or it's a, a service service personnel. And they can do that because you can, they have this natural language processing model, which allows you to ask it a question just like you would uh, a human and uh, ha have it return a response to you just like they are a human. Um, it's got, depending on which version of chat, if you use the paid version or the free version, it has updated um, knowledge from all across the internet and different and different texts across the internet. The paid version will have, will, will, is I believe now up to, you can get real time browsing from it, but uh, the general ch chat and it has it through April of 2023, I believe. So just under um, a year ago. It will remember the chat for you, so you can keep it open. You can, once you're logged into your account, you can go back and and open up a, a previous conversation and continue to chat with that with Chat GPT, as well as save those chats for the future. Uh, it can be adjusted for specific jobs, so we'll talk about how to prompt these things and let it do different things for you. So it's kind of a you know an expert in different spaces. Uh, it can it can work offline, so you don't need to be connected or be in a browser for just basic chats, you would if it's got to go back through and, um, you know, research anything or, or, or um, look at like the use the browser status to get to those things. But for running different scripts and things that are that you can get from from chat GPT, you don't need to be online. Uh, and it they've they've they continue to reduce the harmful replies that it would return to you. So either being you know inaccurate or being like a, you know, a harmful response. So some ways to use ChatGPT. One that we like to use here, uh, as well as we see, you know, a number of our clients and people we work with and, and really start to recommend, this is kind of like, you know, dipping your your, your toes in um, to using this, is using ChatGPT like to brainstorm ideas. Um, so specifically like for nonprofit organizations, think about how you can, you know, better serve your community, uh, come up with ideas that, or, or, or look to ChatGPT as the resource to give you you know, possible scenarios where your nonprofit could either use AI, where it could take advantage of, you know, um, historically beneficial things that you guys have done in the past or other or other agencies or other nonprofits have done. 
um, or just to get kind of put your finger, get your fingers on the pulse of what's happening in this space currently. So prompting it to ask it to a, for a question, you know, what would you do in this situation? Or, I, you know, here's my problem. Here's what I have to do. How would you solve that? Give me 10 recommendations um, to do this or get more more advanced with the prompting of it to really kind of be the brainstorm of ideas. So back to the earlier an earlier point where people have, you know, someone writing an email for them or writing um, blog post or whatever, maybe not, maybe not having AI write the entire email. So, it, you know, so it still sounds like you, but use this to, you know, prompt idea generation for what you're going to write about um, or what you're going to, to put out there. So getting the most out of from Ted GPT. So let's talk about uh, how Ted GPT works actually. Like uh, I'll show you a demo why you can do the prompting stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to worry about anything like this. This will be for the completely beginner. So don't worry. I'm here to help you and guide you how you can use ChatGPT from scratch. So in order to get a, uh, getting the most out of from ChatGPT, you need to uh, ask a question. And that question we call prompt. So the better question you can ask, the better it will give you the reply very 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 important so that's the common question i got uh, every time like people asking how can i ask a better question how can i ask the better prompt so there's a couple of uh, uh, prompting technology we have like a one shot quick shot i'm not going to talk about this because this something will be advanced but i just want to keep it beginner so you can create a structure like uh, i say it again the better chat gpt know about you the better it can respond so the very important part is the context. That's called the context. So uh, in order to create a context or so giving a context to chat GPT, you can uh, create uh, this context field. Like you can create uh, like this uh, organization overview, partnership and collaboration, what you do, initiative, mission, and vision. So that you, when you have this, you send this to chat GPT telling this is me. And I'm going to also give you a short uh, uh, tips, quick tips, how we can also utilize this on custom instruction as well. But uh, before you jump into the prompt, I'll recommend you to use, uh, create a, a organization overview or about your organization, something you can feed through chat GPT. Then once you have the context, give a task that you wanted to, you want chat GPT to do. If the chat GPT is not replying how you want it to be, show them an example. Like, I want this format like this. Then you will understand, okay, oh, I see. Now you're asking me to reply like this, this, this. I'm, I'm going to show you an example as well. Then if it's not still working, then you can assign a role, assign a reference or tone is very important. Uh, people are, uh, the common objection I, I see people are having is like AI uh, yeah, is not uh, responding like humans. Yes, it's, it can't actually replicate 100% of human, but I'm going to give you some tips that you can use to uh, make it as much as humanized as possible so that you can get the best out of from chat GPT. So coming back to the next slide. Uh, that's a quick example of a prompt that I have uh, created before, I think last year on my ebook. And you, don't worry, you'll also get this for absolutely free. That prompt, I talk about like creating a cop, uh, like I give a role to chat GPT as a human copywriting expert to write a extended sales copy for a fake nonprofit that I have created on ChatGPT. I give a little bit of uh, information about who I am. I mean, who, who, who what my organization does and what all about the organization so they understand uh, the key points and based on it, create a copy. So that's the whole part of the prompt. Like the first uh, two paragraphs you see from act as a professional human copywriting expert to community well-being, that's actually a prompt, detailed prompt to make it better. Let's go to the next one. Uh, so this is very interesting. Why? Uh, I'm going to talk about like custom instruction. Like you can't actually uh, copy uh, context every time and go to every uh, thread and paste it here before you start a conversation. This is something not actually looks really good and something not actually work as well. Uh, so that's why we have custom instruction on chat GPT. And it's available for free version and paid version as well. What you have to do, uh, you have to click on I'm going to show you the demo because this is this is very important to show you on demo because I can't actually show explain you how uh, the custom instruction will work. But just to give you an idea, uh, there were two boxes in custom instruction. First one is uh, to let them know about you. 
And that next box will be how you want ChatGPT to respond. This is very important. So first one will be as, as of like context, giving information about you or about your organization. And the second one will be how you uh, want ChatGPT to respond, like uh, tone, uh, verbosity, and stuff like that. And I'm going to also talk about this as well in detail. So when we apply these things, and then whenever we start any new conversation, that custom instruction will work like a pre-prompt. I mean, before you send any prompt, it will work like a sticky note on every thread so that uh, it can identify your instruction and then provide response based on that without typing it again and again. I hope that makes sense. Great. Uh, so as, as Tarek said, we're going to kind of walk through a demo, but we're going to get through the slides and then that way we can save some of that for the end so we can do that during the, the Q&A. Um, so you'll see these, I know this is hard to read. So th this is really just um, a lot. Some of these slides are just meant to be distributed when we share this with you all after this, that'll give you some, um, some ideas on like example prompts um, for different use cases, different um, applications for you all. So you'll see these as we kind of breeze through them. Um, one of the other things, so we mentioned, you know, how, how you can use it for brainstorming. The other, Another way that, that we really like using chat GPT, especially the marketing space, and we think this has a lot of relevance to you all, is figuring out who your audiences are and your personas. So um, when you think about, for, these might be new words for some people. So the personas is, like, is sort of like your ideal person, right? And what, what, that, what that, that user might look like. So using chat GPT, we can give it some information um, about your organization, about the space, and it can actually come back to you and and give you um, you know some real data on who your ideal persona might be. So let's say you're a nonprofit organization um, or a boys and girls club, you know. So ChatGPT could come back to you. You could tell them where you are. You could tell them sort of the the um, the audience, the general audience you serve, and it could come back and tell you, okay, based on what we know, based on uh, you know like this. Uh, abundance of data that we have, we know that your ideal audience or your persona is, you know, someone who, let's just say it's in an inner city environment who has, you know, a child under the age of 18 um, who needs, you know, um, to be active, have some after school care, uh, who might not get the same support that they would, that they would in a different environment or something of that nature. And they'll give you a lot of uh, information on demographics. It'll also, it can also spit back out information telling you about what they might be interested in and what might resonate well with them. Um, we can also use it kind of a level up from that to identify where that audience might be. So they would say, you know, this is the size of that audience. This is where they are active. These are the different uh, platforms that they use most frequently. So that could be stuff as, as detailed as like, they're, you know, they, they engage on Facebook from a smartphone and things of that nature without you having to go out there and do a lot of that research on your own. It's not going to be, you know, perfect. It's not going to be hyper specific as it would be if you did something like did an actual, you know, uh, marketing audit and and re, uh, like market research on this. But it it does it can do a lot of that for you and give you a great a great head start. You can also use it for cleaning up a donor database or any database uh, for that matter. There's a bunch of really cool things that that I, I actually use. Um, I think ChatGPT for on almost a daily basis when it comes to cleaning up data, like an Excel spreadsheet. So let's, if you're not using a CRM or a really well-structured CRM, you probably like a lot of nonprofits we see have, you know, a bunch of different spreadsheets that they've collected over the years from events, from, you know, email platforms, whatever that might be, from donations that they've received, something that they even, maybe a list they bought, and they'll have five, 10, 15, any, any number of different um, spreadsheets that they're actively trying to keep up with. And what we see often is that the same name appears frequently in those spreadsheets, but they haven't done the work to combine those things. So you could actually give ChatGPT those spreadsheets and say, find me all the duplicates and then put all their, you know, um, different columns in this new spreadsheet for me that's formatted that tells me, you know, email address, first name, last name, title, anything that it can pick out from those different spreadsheets. And then it'll create you a nice, you know, uh, reduced down table or version of that you can all you can also use it for um you know cleaning it up to give you you know one was say here's you know here's a bunch of spreadsheets that we have from donations give me the total value of 
you know, all users that have donated more than $5,000 with us in the last, you know, five years or something like that. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can use this just pretty quickly to, to do, to consolidate a lot of that, um, usually more manual work for you. You can also, as I've alluded to a couple of times, let AI help you write your blog, let AI help you write um, content for your website. So there's some caveats here about, you know, plagiarism, um, you know, making sure it's original work. But as we mentioned earlier, it's a great, it's a great tool to either give you the outline. For, so if you tell it what you want to write about, or you give it some topics or help, let it help you brainstorm some topics, it's a great tool to say, you know, hey, I need to write a blog post. It needs to be more than 3,000 characters. I need 10 sections uh, with headings on, uh, you know, like the breakdown of what this could be. And then you could actually use it, break those 10 sections down and say, okay, here, I need, you know, 400 words or 500 words, whatever it is for this section. And then you need to make it your own. You would run it through some plagiarism tech, uh, plagiarism detector, add your own relevant links and sources. But it's a great way to get started so you're not doing that from scratch or maybe, you know, paying somebody to write that for you. It's also a great tool to feed your your current content to and have it draft like uh, summarize that for you. Pull out the net the little tidbits of information. So we like to we we frequently try try to repurpose content as much as possible. So if you had that let's just say three thousand word blog post, you can really take that and and break it down into small little almost sound bites that you could use to post on Facebook or post like a quote on Instagram um, or share on LinkedIn. And let ChatGPT be the one that goes through that and say, you know, say, hey, I need, you know, 20 tweets about the 20 tweets from this. Let's, you know, can you give me 20 different 160 character um, little blurbs I can use and ask it to give you that in like a table format or a spreadsheet format so that you can have that and just feed it into some other system. So looking beyond ChatGPT, or I've seen a number of questions come through on uh, you know other platforms like Gemini and things of that nature. Let's talk about some of the the different options that are out there. Um, you're seeing this. You're seeing I would almost daily. I'm seeing a, another tech company come out with another piece of AI or another tool that either competes with or lives on top of something like ChatGPT or OpenAI. Um, so we'll kind of go through some of these at a high level. Um, one is that we've probably all seen by now is, is Google Bard. Um, this is like a chatbot that uses data from across the entire internet uh, and, and across Google's different apps and, and services. So it has access to a lot of the information that, that, open, that OpenAI or ChatGPT might not have had originally. Similarly, there's Microsoft Bing Chat, which is uh, you know Microsoft's kind of version of, of, of ChatGPT. It uses it's more of like a Bing search engine. So it returns sort of natural language uh, search results and it uses like the more advanced chat GPT open AI model. Um, there's Gemini, which came out on um, like in December of this, of this past year. And it's really been positioned as that competitor to open AI. And then uh, more specific tools like Jasper, which is really focused on content creation and, generation or Amazon's offering with like their two different tools uh, for generative AI um, and some others are here. Back to Tarek. Okay, let's talk about Gemini. So I think everyone know about Bard, Google Bard. So Google Bard was uh, Google one of the AI uh, that's been replaced with an AI updated uh, model called Gemini. Now, Gemini has a uh, multiple version, and now they have the paid version as well that start with 20 bucks, like GPT. Uh, but uh, if you consider uh, something for free and every time, uh, then I prefer to use uh, Gemini, but uh, until yesterday. <laughs> but I'm going to talk about this uh, later as well, but... Gemini is not something like a chat GPT 100%. You can't be chat GPT, but it has a couple of things that, that you need to hear of. Like Gemini can um, create content more better than uh, chat GPT, like writing some content also. For, someone asked a question, I think, in Q&A, asking about what are the main difference between Gemini and chat GPT. I found uh, if you get the paid version, 
that you can include with your workspace, we include with your all Google product like docs and email and everything. You can actually use Gemini inside of it. Like you can craft email reply within one click using Gemini. So I, I love that feature. So it saves tons of your time. You don't have to worry about integrating ChatGPT with your Google workspace through a third party like Zapier or make.com. You don't have to do this, but you can use Gemini uh, if you have the Google Workspace already, then you can uh, get the 14 bucks upgrade for a month, and then you can have the Gemini paid version that you can utilize on anywhere, like from uh, Google Sheet, Google Doc, Google PowerPoint, Google Email, Gmail, everywhere you can use Gemini. So uh, I found this is really helpful if you are using all Google product every day. And you can also craft email reply from um, Gemini uh, from your Gmail any any reply or you can also compose an email within the Gmail dashboard uh, okay so when people talk about uh, automation one of the thing I have in my mind is uh, a extension there's tons of things you can do but I want to share this as well it's called Harp AI uh, I like this actually I use it a lot these tools and I'm going to show you a demo what it does it's a third party Chrome ex extension that you can integrate uh, on your website uh, sorry on your Chrome uh, plugin add-ons and once you add that you can also uh, add your Chrome cloud or any uh, Gemini account log into that what happens then whenever you browse a particular website or well, you you want to craft anything, you want to summarize anything, you want to send an email, you can actually do this right away from that Chrome extension by clicking only one button. And also it feed data into a ChatGPT account. I'll show you a, a live demo so that you can understand better. Don't worry about it. Let's go to the next slide because we don't have actually enough time. I think you missed. So people will love that again. Uh, there's tons of chatbot out there and you know chatbot is booming this industry. Everyone is using chatbot on their website. So why not, why you should, uh, uh, why you not use that as well? But the problem with chatbot is um, there's tons of chatbot out there, but it, it comes with a cost. It comes with a price and it's not actually really cheap. Then I look for like a couple of alternative that we can use. And I also keep in this mind for something for nonprofit that you can get for free also has like a really good feature. Then I found this uh, particular tool and I also talk about on my last webinar as well. Chatbots, it's name actually chatbot. It's also a chatbot and name of the product also chatbot. So you have to search for chatbot for AI for nonprofit, chatbot AI for nonprofit, or I have also assigned a link here. And you have to go, you can go to this link and it's very easy. You can just apply with your uh, nonprofit or information, and they will give you, I think, uh, two fifty dollars bucks uh, subscription for absolutely free. Uh, then you can add this chatbot into your website, and you can have the whole AI conversation going on on from your website. And I think you're gonna love it. This is something I found really cool, and people, everyone, love that. Uh, let's talk about a couple of video editing tools. I found people are using video editing tools as well, like it's saving your time, saving your money. Unfortunately, there's no good one actually really free in terms of free. Someone comes with like a um, watermark that you can't actually use uh, in real life scenario, but uh, I'll show you a couple of free, uh, not free actually, cheap alternative of Syntasia. But if you ask me, Tarek, which one is really good out there, best in the market? I'll say Syntasia. It's a video, text to video. So uh, what you can do, like you can create a script from ChatGPT, copy there and paste it to Syntasia. Then you can see this avatar, like this person, is going to talk like a human. You don't have to do anything. Just uh, buy their, one of their $29 subscription and you have 10 minutes, stuff like that. Tons of things going on. But if you ask me something you can use in real life, there are tons of tools out there for playing, but if you think about a tool that you can use on uh, your commercial basis or something for promotional perspective, then I prefer Syntasia because it um, it uh, actually like um, is one of the best on the industry. Then we have Sora. It's not actually available, but when it will be available, 
everyone gonna know about it and, and then we also know about, know about the gpt5 the one of the most uh, powerful gpt model uh gpt5 with gpt sora and uh, then where you can create text to video very 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 amazing and then we have a couple of alternative out there like eli.io dbrain.io that you can also take a look on that i'll also show you a demo as well that's it cool um so we'll talk we, we talked a little bit about using um something like chat gpt in to, to reduce a donor database down or to clean up a donor database. Um, but then taking a step further, there's tools that already have AI built into them like HubSpot, which will help you will use the power of AI to analyze that donor data. It's better categorize that donor information um, and take these things a step further um, as these, these things are starting to be built into these different programs. So looking at the different tools that you're using every day already, um, if there's not already an AI component to some of these larger um, platforms, things like ClickUp, things like HubSpot, um, you they'll probably start to see that that happening soon. And having a really strong understanding, um, or even a high level understanding of how how to use things like ChatGPT are going to make it a lot easier for you to start adopting that in that platform and get more out of that. Some other tools like in a platform HubSpot, just as the example um, that we're seeing people take advantage of would be like a website generator. Uh, so right, right from within there, you can prompt it to sort of build you a website using some common templates that are in there uh, and taking the content you've given it or uh, recommend or chats you've started with it to build a really just basically kind of draftable website for you. You're gonna have to tweak it on, tweak some of it on your own uh, but it's a great start. And you'll see that in other platforms um, starting to come up like Webflow and Wix and things of that nature. Uh, as we've talked about kind of extensively at this point, using AI to write content for just general content for websites, blog posts, social media posts, emails, uh, things of that nature, uh, social media captions, as I alluded to on the with the chat GPT example, and meta descriptions. And you're, we're, we're seeing this become more and more prevalent uh, and in other marketing automation platforms and tools that we use as well. Uh, for content writing, uh, specifically, we can go through, we'll go, through, I'll just leave some of these here for you all to, to view, as we said, so we can get to the demo. Without further ado on that, I'm going to turn this back over to Tarek so he can share his screen and walk you through this pretty quickly. And then we'll probably take five to six minutes of this um, before we jump into uh, the slurry of questions you have. And I'll, I'll be answering those questions uh, in the while he goes through this as well. Five to six minutes is really hard to explain everything, but yeah. uh, I'll see how far I can go. And if I miss anything, um, uh, I need uh, like... You can reach out to me anytime and I'll do my best to answer your question. Uh, I think I need uh, permission to share my screen. Yep. Awesome. Uh, let me share my screen and tell me uh, how everything goes. Okay. I hope everyone see my screen. Okay. So I think everyone can see my screen. So that's my ChatGPT account. And uh, unfortunately or fortunately, I'm using ChatGPT4 because I need better content. I'm sorry. So when you go to chat.openai.com, you can create an account from ChatGPT. It's very easy, like creating a very simple account. Like once you create your account, you'll see options like these. There are tons of things going on. So first you have to focus on that. This is where you are going to ask some question. And once you ask a question, it will reply your question. Then uh, you may have multiple questions, multiple conversation going on. You can see all of your conversation on the left hand side and you can have like multiple uh, thread that you have open that you can anytime you can access also share with anyone. So let me show you another thing, uh, share with anyone. Let me clear that up. Then, uh, sorry. Okay. So uh, I can say, um, let's go to email marketing, green, uh, Greenscape city grant request. And I can actually share this with someone as well. Like I can click on share and I can share this by clicking on copy link. And whenever I copy that, it will be sent to 
uh, whenever you want, uh, however you want, you can send this link and anyone can access to that. So we can see we have tons of things going on the left hand side and this is why you are going to ask the question. Don't worry, I have a free book that I'm going to give you for absolutely free. But you have a couple of prompts that you can use. Doesn't matter if uh, if you are new to the chat GPT, then I'll recommend going for GPT 3.5. Play with this, do some brainstorming stuff, create some content. And once you love that, I'll recommend to upgrade for GPT 4 because uh, Pre version is not really working really good. So let, let me show you another thing uh, because why it's important. Uh, th that's my team account. I have my personal account as well. Uh, this is where the customized GPT we have. So this is what I was actually talking about, how you can create a GPT that works like you, talks like you. So we are gonna talk about like, we can give you a persona, your nonprofit organization name, then your mission statement. Then we have core values, primary goals, so this is where you are giving about your nonprofit organization. Then you have how you would, uh, would you like to chat GPT to respond. So this is where uh, the cool, uh, interesting part happens. So we're gonna ask some question. Uh, so we're gonna give some information here like about how it should reply. Like uh, I have a couple of things like role specific instruction. I have tone adjustment. I can give any kind of tone here. I can give the verbosity level five, so it's zero to five. Don't worry anything. I have everything here, a template that you can use right away for organization and you can paste it here to get good results. So we see uh, ChatGPT, we see uh, some where we should ask the prompt, uh, how should we can get a reply? So I, I have asked a quick question so to show you how it works. I asked, uh, what does the tokens mean in ChatGPT? So that, that you can see like how uh ChatGPT response. So this is the, this is not actually I, I'll say good prompt. This is just a basic prompt just to show you how it works. And then it replies with this let's say answer. Then I can ask another question. If you don't understand, you can ask another question. You can uh, ask a different. Uh, you can give different prompt. And I'm gonna show you the prompt as well. Uh, let me show you the prompt we have. Uh, there's a couple of uh, prompt you can see. You can just copy and paste and um, use it right away. Uh, don't forget to replace the placeholder of let's say program project placeholder your nonprofit organization name your problem and replace with your information so that you will know about you uh, let me show you the custom instruction one uh, here's the custom instruction uh, here you can see so, so that's the first part what would you like to change to know about your provide your better response so this is your persona uh, this is why you have to put information here and you have to copy that and paste it on custom instruction first box. Then we have second one, second part, and uh, you can copy that and replace with your information like key methodology and stuff like that, tone adjustment, verbosity level. So here you have to do really interesting thing like on verbosity level and tone adjustment, you have to be uh, careful, careful because uh, I, I'm pretty sure people, you're going to ask like, how, how did I know how? which level I should put. How did you know which tone I should put here? So I have a list as well. So if you go there down, uh, I can see I, I, I give you introduction about what is uh, verbosity and tones. And then you can copy this, like you can use any kind of uh, uh, combination like medium verbosity, inspirational tone for fundraising campaign, copywriting, you can use low verbosity. I mean, one or two, if you think about numbers, so it verbosity start from one to five. So three is medium. Two is low, one is very low. Or you can say one, two is very low, or four, five is high. So you can use this high verbosity informative tone to for particular content that you want to generate. If you want to be very specific, you can use that. Then I have making the output better. I mean, human, humanizing the uh, output very better. So if you are getting, let's say, content, it seems like uh, detected by AI, uh, it's not really looking really good, it's not actually working really good, then you can use this. Uh, prompt just copy that copy the whole part and uh, paste it here you have to or you have to use a couple of information like uh, you have to insert demographics tone preference uh, reading level and you have to like change a couple of things that you see on the third bracket like here you can see once you copy that and paste it on your chat but you see that way right away you see a 180 degree turn and your content becomes really good so if you want to make the content 100% AI detectable or uh, AI bypassable, you can do that. But the problem will be the way to the content will be generated is it, it will not be readable. 
But if you want to make the content to be readable 100%, you can't actually make it AI. Uh, you can't actually bypass the AI. So we have to have balanced that. So let's say 20%, 30% is good. And we can use that. And uh, you don't have to do anything. Just copy that, paste it. And um, as we don't have enough time, I'm sorry, I, can exp I can't actually explain everything here, but I'll make sure on maybe one of the webinar, I'll try to explain everything as possible. And you will also get this um, ebook for free. And you can also take a look on that. And um, you can understand like what, what is happening and what kind of information we are giving to chat GPT. So I think uh, it makes sense. So these are the things I want to give uh, introduction uh, to chat GPT. Go, whoever ne uh, never tried chat GPT, go jump into that and start using. Then you we have Gemini, it's from Google. Uh, you can create a free account, start using that. Then we have Clode. So this is important because uh, Clode recently launched uh, their three point oh, and this is by far I, I like actually Clode because in terms of content and accuracy. So if you consider to have like accuracy and uh, uh, accuracy and also a better response, better writing style, I prefer to go with Clode. But every good tool comes with a price. This is not where we uh it, it actually use the free tools. I think uh, TechSoup should reach out to ChatGPT or any other LLM tool asking for a different pricing model for the nonprofit. Because I don't see any um, separate pricing model for uh, nonprofit. So that here you can see the Harpa AI. I have this opened up here to show you how you can, what kind of things you can do with Harpa AI. I mean the Chrome extension. You can get it from if you search on Google Harpa AI Chrome extension. You can find this website. You will click on Add to Chrome, and it will be added to your account. They have multiple paid version. You don't have to go for the paid version. You can use a free version. And from a website, you can start. The good thing is, like, let's say if you're watching a video, you can actually uh, take a note, you can actually transcribe that right away from the video. We're using this just, you click once here and it will be open here. So you may think like, what happens if I do a conversation here is it will be fed or added to my ChatGPT. Yes, whenever you do a conversation here, it will be added to your ChatGPT account right away. And you can also do the conversation from here as well. Then we have the free chatbot and that is what I was actually talking about. <laughs> So then we have Syntagia, the free video editing. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not free, it's paid. It's saying free AI video, but it has actually a trial. So Syntagia, then we have LIIO. It, I think the pricing, in terms of pricing, it was actually cheaper than um, uh, Syntagia. Uh, that's, then we have ebook, and then we also have a paid ebook as well. So I think that's pretty much uh, the live overview. I don't know if I explained everything properly. I'm sorry. Uh, but I think it uh, uh, makes sense. Thank you. Thanks, Tarek. I'm going to reshare and pick back up, um, wrap up, and then just start and then get through some of these questions that I didn't get to answer right in the QA. And we'll answer some of these live. There's a, a few that I think um, this, people have asked very similar questions in some cases. Um, so following this, as Tarek said, there's an ebook that we're, we'll provide. There's a link in the, um, in this presentation, you guys will see that. Um, there's also some other links in here to some of the services provided through TechSoup, including some marketing web support, um, and specific answers, uh, to some of the questions we're seeing from you all today. Uh, you can get to that by going through TechSoup's website and just on the drop down under services, you'll see website services and digital marketing services. Either one of those will take you uh, directly to us. Um, through that, we provide a number of different solutions. Um, some things being like ongoing digital marketing services and ongoing website maintenance services um, for nonprofit organizations. So it's more of a, a hands off approach from you all for you all. Um, as Tarek mentioned. This link will be in the slide for that bonus ebook on chat GPT prompts. Uh, there's a free version and there's also a uh, paid version of this as well, which is, has a lot more uh, detail in it um, and specifics on other platforms outside of just mm -hmm. chat GPT. I want to mention one thing on the paid ebook. Uh, we are launching uh, the version 3.0 on this month on uh, March 14. And uh, the good thing here is like we are going to have some multiple custom GPT. This is something we are currently working on. We already have a couple of things done. And you're going to love that. So if you get the paid GPT, you also get, uh, we'll make sure you also give you the free uh, custom GPT. But you need to have the GPT for the I mean, paid account to use that custom GPT. 
but don't worry if you if you're new to this uh, i'll recommend uh, uh, using the free book and free version of chat gpt cloud and gemini thanks Derek. so i'm going to start i'll go through some of these questions but please feel free to keep adding those in the q a section um i'm going to go through this first and then whatever's left if we have some time i'll jump into the chat um one question that i've seen a, a few people ask about is the uh around privacy when you're uploading your information uh the free version of well i'll, I'll cover this in a couple of different um steps one the, the paid version you actually have more control over your privacy and chat gpt will not use your chats or the information you provide it um they will not put that back into its into its model so it's not going to use your like if you're giving it uh you know content from your website or things like that it's not going to put that back into its models um, but any of the versions, they, you know, anytime you're giving information out, you need to be careful of what's there, where you're providing that. So don't be putting any like PII or HIPAA information, things like that into any other systems, unless you have like a BAA with them, um, or you know that it, it does manage that, that security. What we recommend, um, from a, like for donor databases and things of that nature is, to pare down um, what you provide. So the the larger the request is, the, the um, well, obviously there's more privacy concern there is, but also the greater likelihood there is that there's gonna be like an error, or it's gonna kick something back to you. So what we would, what we typically do and we recommend if we're doing this with our clients is uh, randomizing or obfuscating uh, the personal information. So you would leave, for example, their, all of their you know, email address, name, all that stuff like that in uh, in your system or in your files. And then you would just pull out like a unique identifier. So you would associate like, you know, let's say there's 15 thing, fifteen names in there. You would give them numbers one to, one to 15. And when you would only give um, chat CPT the information you wanted like deduplicated or consolidated. So it'd be like number one would be, you know, for me, it would be kyletapnetwork.com, but I wouldn't leave my email address in there. Uh, or I would take the first, I would take everything after the at out of it so that you would just have my first name or whatever. So it, it wouldn't be able to store that in its in its system. But it is, ChatGPT commits to only using that data you give it for processing your request. So it doesn't, it shouldn't be storing that. It wouldn't be storing that information after the fact to like create a, a database of information. So someone did ask like, can I give this um, a, a spreadsheet with like missing information in here and have it fill it in. ChatGPT won't do that. Something like Zoom Info is what you would need to do that with. It's only going to, if you gave it two different documents and asked it to combine duplicates or to fill in the blanks, it could take your two documents. It runs like a Python script and pulls that information together for you. So you don't have to do that, but it's not going to go out there and find stuff on the internet and, and populate that with you. Um, it also, they also commit to once you close the session or once you don't need the um, the data anymore, it will remove that from the memory. So it's not, it doesn't, it just, it's just temporary data. It doesn't hold it, um, they hold on to it long term. So you can't go back to it and ask it about that in the future. Um, but they do always recommend, as I said, like that, uh, not like anonymizing the data or obfuscating it any way you can. Uh, I've seen questions here about nonprofit discounts. I don't, there's no current chat GPT nonprofit discounts that, that I've seen that we know of. Um, there's the free version, which will give you up to 3.5, which is going to give you, um, it's not going to give you uh, like real time information from the internet, like you would get from something like Gemini. Um, and then there's the paid versions, which give you, you know, better data security, obviously, uh, as I mentioned. Um, but also will give you more real-time information and gives you like the browser capabilities so you can have it go out and search search the internet for you. Um, those start around $20 per user per month. And there's, uh, there's team plans as well. So if you want to uh, get more specific and, and just have it something, something for your nonprofit, your organization, have a little more control over it and the data, um, you would use something like that. Uh, there was a number of questions that I've seen where it's asked, where people asked if they can have if this fix their website or fix their website's SEO um, or make it compliant. Um, it can certainly help with that. It's not going to go out there and make the changes to the website for you. So you can give it information and say, you know, I need this to be optimized. You know, you, it's 
it is going to be always always going to be sort of garbage in garbage out so the more the more information you give it the better it's going to be able to respond to you and react to you uh, but it's you can't say hey can you fix my website the home page is you know doesn't work on a, a desktop it's not going to do that but if you know you know you have an idea of like what's going what's going wrong you can certainly ask it to um, you know, give you some solutions to fix that. Or if it's about content, you can give it the content that you currently have and tell it what you needed to do. Um, like to give you the content back to, to fill that in. You can also say, you know, I need, uh, you know, a, a 10 page website, for example, it needs to have, be on these different topics, give me the outline. And then you, you have to take it step by step from there. So, here, okay, here's the outline. Here's the first version. I need a, uh, you know, a page with this much content on it. I need this many headers. I can start to, to create that for you, but you're still going to have to go back and put that in yourself into the site. Um, what else is in here? Uh, a number of people asked about the pros and cons of uh, like chat GPT versus Bard or what's Gemini now, um, or Meta's version of, uh, of this, uh, Derek, I don't know if you want to jump on that up, talk for a good amount of time. Yeah, you can also talk, no problem. So I just want to give you a heads up on that. <clears throat> from now, from today, no, no one can beat ChatGPT. So if you want a tool that can do everything like brainstorming and everything, stuff like that, I prefer to use ChatGPT over Gemini. Uh, but if you have like, you want to try multiple tools and you, you want to spend money, then I'll uh, prefer to go for the Gemini Pro it was still yesterday, but not from today. You would now go for the Cloud A 3.0 version for 20 bucks. It will be better than ChatGPT and Gemini. Awesome, thanks. Um, what else is in here? I'm just trying to go back through the chat now. Um, somebody, somebody asked about if the free version or ChatGPT 3.5 lets you analyze and dedupe spreadsheets. It doesn't have the, you can't attach the information. It will let you paste in some of the information, but it's, it's going to be limited in how much you can put put in there. So the, the paid versions would be um, something you'd need to use to, to get it to do that for you. But again, I'd also mention, I'd also recommend looking at some of the tools you probably already have that you use on a daily basis that can do some of this for you as, as some of these will have like that kind of deduplication stuff built in. So tools like Notion can do can do some deduplication chat or Google Sheets has some AI tools built into it now, which will allow you to, to, to run scripts or deduplication things um, over them. So you might not actually, you might be able to do this without actually having to, to drop it into chat GPT as well. Um, Somebody asked, how do we use gener generative AI directly um, for our organization? Uh, but we use, I mean, we use this every day for ourselves and for our clients for a number of different things. Um, certainly for brainstorming, definitely to to reduce the, the, the time to sort of the time to market for things, uh, especially for people. So before where we'd have to spend, you know, you know, a bunch of time coming up with our own ideas. We certainly do come up with our own ideas, but we also use this to help us brainstorm and also recommend our clients use it as well. Um, we use it for, you know, idea generation around, um, certainly for in the creative space too. So this is very helpful for us to create, to, to provide variety. We don't use AI to create logos. We don't use AI to create images and things like that, that we we use on a daily basis typically, but we will use it for a, a lot of brainstorming and idea generation there. Also to to be like space fillers and things of that nature to, to show like when we're building a website or designing a website for someone, you know, instead of using a stock photo uh, or going out there and finding those those stock photos, we can actually tell AI what we want it to create for us so it can put that that filler, um, you know, or positioning type photo in there for, for us. Um, and save us, you know, save us, save our clients time and money there. Uh -huh. yeah, somebody asked about the ebook. Yeah, that stuff will be included as links in um, in this document, like in the PowerPoint presentation. I think it'll actually just be an email as well. And we are getting cut off here in one minute. So I do want to thank you all. As we said, these links will be provided here. There's a, a way to contact us. Um, on these slides and we really look forward to to hearing from you all and seeing some of the cool stuff you guys are able to do and, and leverage these 
these tools for. Thanks, everyone.